here on Land Institute. So uh, next week, we just wanted to watch actually helping see, seeing, realizing those projects and how, how can we as a region do that more efficiently w w with the limited uh, planning dollars that, that we all have nowadays. So it, it, as we go through the areas, think about um, any information that you have on these areas. There are green um, cards on, on the table and pens in the basket in the middle. And, and we have maps up around the room of these areas so, so that you can give us any, any input today on the process. And I'll also be happy to take any, any questions that you have on, on where we go from here. But it, as you can see from the, the long list in, uh, in front of you is, is that we have a lot to consider as we go through these, these projects and, and, and a lot to consider in these planning areas. And so we have, um, you know, literally stacks of paper already from the jurisdictions. We have planners working nights and weekends to, to get us more information on these sites. And so there is a strong commitment from, from all five jurisdictions. Um, first site, first jurisdiction that submitted sites was City of Sacramento submitted five sites uh, for us to consider. Um, the JKNL corridor is uh, defined uh, by uh, an infrastructure plan they've done down there. Um, it runs from I Street to Capitol Mall, um, from 3rd Street to uh, 16th Street. And, and so there are, there are many housing opportunities in, in this area, many mixed use opportunities in this area that, that um, you know, the city has been working on for quite some time. The, the second area on this map uh, down in the bottom is the R Street corridor. Uh, and, and that's R Street um, from uh, the area between Q and R to the area between uh, uh, S, R and S, and, and then running from 11th uh, Street to 18th Street. Uh, two other areas in the city of Sacramento are the 65th Street uh, light rail station area. There, there's been quite a bit of, uh, of planning work done out there to, to realize uh, a new community uh, near uh, CSU Sacramento. Um, and then also the Fruit Ridge and Stockton area where, where there's also uh, been quite a bit of, of planning work uh, done for uh, housing to, to build a, a more complete community down in that area. Uh, Kasumnas uh, River Light Rail Station uh, area uh, provides an opportunity for housing uh, near a community college and, and another opportunity to, to build a more complete community <coughs> in that area. Um, County of Sacramento submitted uh, the uh, Manlove Station area. This is an area uh, that currently uh, does not have uh, a lot of high density housing um, and, and does have a, a lot of potential uh, near a light rail station. Uh, City of West Sacramento submitted two sites, um, the Washington specific plan area that, that they're um, continuing work on um, and, and that uh, does um, ha have a specific plan that, that they're replacing with general plan land uses. And so there's many opportunities in this area uh, for uh, housing of, of varied levels. Also, the West Capitol uh, corridor from uh, just uh, west of Jefferson uh, to uh, to the harbor uh, area, and another um, redevelopment area for the city of West Sacramento, where, where there is uh, you know plenty of opportunity to to build a complete community. City of Rancho Cordova submitted two sites: uh, the Mather Mills Light Rail Station, where, where, where there are uh, many opportunities the city's been working on to to to. Uh, realized development and, and really a complete community in that area. Um, Cordova Town Center is the second area uh, that they submitted to us. I, and again, a, a great opportunity where housing can, can, can really build a complete community in that, in that neighborhood it, with access to transit. And then finally, the uh, City of Davis uh, submitted uh, a Nishi property, which is a part of the East um, Olive Drive specific plan area. And, and this is west of Richards, if, if you're familiar with Davis. Um, in, in an area between the freeway and the railroad tracks that would provide a new south entrance uh, to the uh, UC Davis campus. And, and, and so this is a, a, um, another area where there, were, there is uh, a community there, but this would really realize a, a, a new aspect to that community. So as I said, we have maps up around the room. We have Greek comment cards on your table. The, the, the process for from here out is is for SACOG to work with our group of advisors, the steering committee, the consortium steering committee for the grant, the, the ULI team that, that was named named in the grant application, and, and, and recommendations from ULI for, for us to go develop a, a recommendation for our board of directors as to which four or five we can afford to invest uh, research on in our EIR process and in our action plan process. 
we have limited funding for both of those in, 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 you know, as a part of this grant project. And, and so while we would love to study all 11 areas, we, we just can't afford to do that and don't have the time to do that. As you'll recall, we received this grant when we were halfway through the MTP process already. So, so we, we do want to recognize that all of these areas being submitted will get future planning considerations and, and, and there will be a, a, you know, a lot more activity in, in, in probably grant writing for these areas and, and so we, we believe that, that, that they're all at a higher level now than, than many of the other TOD areas considered in, in our region. So I'd be happy to answer any questions there you have on the process. Bill? I just had a question. So looking at the maps, there are some that are bounded by circles, others by you know blocks or rectangles. Um, I'm assuming that those that aren't circles are specific plans or general plans. My question is, you know, to a certain extent, you know, because we're moving to a physical place, how do we make sure that that uh, we're comparing apples to apples, so to speak? Um, can we imagine that the circled areas are going to be redefined uh, to specific blocks? Yes, yeah, so what, what we're examining, and, and this is, again, because this is the first time as far as we can tell anybody's ever done this, trying to use a R RTP EIR to, to promote, you know, real development around transit, land use development around transit. We're, we're currently working with the, the attorneys um, who are on our EIR process to, to say what, what are we actually able to provide clearance for? And so that, that's one question, and, and at a minimum, that, that is housing sites in, that, that are within those areas, that, the parcels for residential housing. The, the, the short answer to your question is we're, we're taking the parcels that, that are within that planning area, and in some cases, a couple cases, likely still working on that, that boundary, to, to say which, which parcels are, are in the full consideration, so, so that when we do our analysis at SACOG, we are comparing exactly what, what the city submitted to us, or the county submitted to us. Um, we're going to be running our forecasting models at, at, at SACOG on, on these areas in, in measuring the, uh, the greenhouse gas um, in the current um, plans and, and our current MTP process and, and then what, what the current emissions are so, so that we have um, comparative analyses to look at. We're also going to be looking at access to retail employment, access to social services through the transportation system from these sites. So, so that is very important consideration. That, that, that we have all of those parcels accurately identified in the land uses uh, there within. Are these going to be on the website, and is there going to be up? Can we comment later? Hey, you know, after, after today. Yes, you you can certainly comment after after today. And, and there, are, are they the maps going to be on the website? We'll we'll, we'll get the map up on the, on the sustainable communities uh, website. Certainly. Oh, how well, how long a time can we come at the end of the year? So um, we need to have the very latest we can have our recommendation developed is, is June 17th. So, uh, you know, really we, we have about two to three weeks to, to take comment on these sites and, and to, to figure out where we can best, you know, invest our, our dollars to realize success. So we, we've said all along between four and five, and I, I don't think we're, we're moving outside of that bracket, and that, that's all the information I have today. <laughs> it seems this uh, eventually this is going to be a template document to be used by the whole, you know, SACOG region. It is, and, and these 11 projects seem to represent two counties, the old yeah. county and Sacramento County. Is there sort of potential for El Dorado, Plaster, Yuba, Sutter? Yes. Be included at this point? Yes, there, there is potential for, and I'll be honest, in, in, in the current plan we have, and the current land use we have, there, there's potential in Placer, Sacramento, and Yolo counties for the densities of the, that we believe we can provide clearance for under, under SB 375. And so that, that's still a question on the table as to what, what can we provide environmental clearance for. But if, but if it is the, the developments of 20 units, the residential developments of 20 units per acre uh, of net densities, that they only show up in those three counties within a half mile of high quality transit right now in our, in our current plan, our, our current draft.